though no one can go back and make a brand new start. Anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. I was awoken with a bang. It was less like a gunshot and more the fact that instead it had been my head hitting the wooden door frame. Ugh, what the hell? I muttered, struggling to open my tired eyes. Oh, sorry. Shadow yelped. I could feel his warm body below me, and instinctively I wrapped my hooves tighter around him. The heavy sounds of his footsteps slowed as we tilted forward. For a moment, I felt like we were falling before the old wooden steps under us groaned in protest as he carried me down them. What's going on? I had a right to know why he dragged me away from my beautiful bed at such an unsightly hour. I was still so tired that I could not even focus on my pit vision to see what time it actually was. I'm making you get waffles. He stated in an almost annoyed tone. You aren't skipping another meal on my watch. You need your strength. Waffles? Food sounded good, but sleep sounded so much better. Five more minutes. No. He replied sternly as we reached the landing of the stairs. And that's what you said half an hour ago which was five minutes after you'd promised to get up for waffles. With a sharp turn and a scrunch of my muzzle against his cold, uh, folded wings, we headed through what remained of Harmony's shop. Somewhere in my hazy mind, I was glad that I couldn't focus on the complete and utter destruction of what was once my friend's profitable livelihood. That is, until my rear hoof caught on the half-destroyed shelf and collapsed it with a thunderous clatter. That's it. I groaned, flailing lightly across Shadow's back. I'm just tired, not crippled, I can walk myself. Are you sure? He said, hesitating before I did my best to give him a tired glare. Okay then. With that was probably the most gentle way he could have gone about it. I shortly found all four of my still tired and shaky hooves underneath me. At the very least, the cold hadn't gotten to me yet. With how you were sleeping, a pony could be confused that you'd slipped into a coma. No. I grumbled. Okay. One hoop in front of the other. Nice and easy. It was... a long night. I was talking to one of the elements. With each hoof step, my body seemed to remember more of the fundamentals of walking, and I quickly found myself at the door, which Shadow nearly threw himself at to open for me. You communed with the elements again. The excitement that he put on those words far outpaced my capacity to grasp it at all. Did they help you understand your element more? With a metallic squeal, he pushed the door. There was a sharp snap as the hinges it was on sheared from the doorway, and the whole thing fell forward into the snowy street. No, not those elements. I sighed, stepping through the open doorway. The old bearers. Anti-rarity, mostly. You... You were talking with a dead ministry mayor. His disbelief was understandable, and a few months ago I'd have been right there with him. Huh. What did she want? To remind me that ponies die, I said, slowly, uh, slowing to a stop in the snow. She wanted me to know that no matter what, in this fight, it's going to cost us, even if we win. With a flutter of his wings, he pushed off and hovered his way around in front of me. Let's not talk about it, all right? With his forehoof, he brushed on my mane until it slipped around the back of my ear. They always told us that thinking too hard after you wake up is bad for you. I rolled my eyes. Yeah, how could you ever be disloyal if you didn't have to think so much? Hey, not every pony up there is a city-destroying asshole, okay? He stood up straight and dropped his hoof into the snow. So in my brain, it finally clicked that the words I'd chosen might not have been the most flattering. The military might have been ignorant, but catching him off guard, I nearly leapt at him with a kiss. He fought for a split second, as it was now his mind's turn to play catch-up, but with a heavy sigh, he finally relented. I didn't mean anything bad by it. I looked up at him as we broke the kiss. But you have to admit, you were a bit... Old-fashioned when I first met you. I raised my hoof to point at the cask's bar. I mean, you said you'd come down to the waist before. 
yet you still tried to pay with your fancy sky money. I watched as my words seemed to have the opposite effect that I'd hoped for. I watched the calm in his eyes drain away, being replaced with sadness as he turned and looked away from me. After the first time I was down here, the only thing I wanted to buy from any point was forgiveness. Slowly, he reached his hoof up and ran it across the cross-shaped scar on his face. Hey. With a stiff thrust, I pushed myself against him and hooked my forehoof around him. He reacted quickly, pushing back against me to keep us both from falling into the snowy ground. The only point you need forgiveness from is me, I said, watching as he opened his muzzle in confusion as he looked at me. And I forgive you. For everything you've done down in this craptastic place, we all call the Wasteland. All right? With my words, a weak smile crept across his muzzle and he gave me a small nod. Oh, thank the goddesses! Previously, a previous seemingly appeared into the space right next to me. I was hanging on to Shadow so tightly that I couldn't have jumped in surprise, but inside my mind I was screaming like a filly. Your forgiveness means a lot to me, Storm. What the hell, Preed? I snapped at him, releasing Shadow and turning to smash him over the head with my hoof. I swear, if you don't stop sneaking up on me, I'm going to find a set of bells and staple them to where your balls were so you can't fucking do it anymore. I growled and glared at him. Got it? He simply blinked and looked in confusion. If the bells are where my balls are... God is damned, Preed. Where did my balls go? He cupped his chin with a forehoof and looked lost in thought. I would have torn them off first. I grumbled, quickly losing hope that today was going to be any sort of good. Then why? He started to say before I cut him off. It was implied. I snorted. Shut up. I'm so tired. What do you want? Oh, right. He shook his head and blinked a few times. I may or may not have asked uh, by feature what happened down in the element chamber. He paused, looking at me like I was supposed to say something. When I didn't, he took that as his cue to continue. And I may or may not have told him about all the blue flyer and the ethereal alicorn thing from back in the Omega Orchard. Uh-huh. I sighed, face hoofing for what would no doubt be the last time or not the last time I would have done so today. And... And he may or may not have spun your trials of the last month into an epic story that the foals of the scavengers have bought into. Preed gave me an excruciatingly nervous smile. So you probably have about ten seconds until you're swarmed by excited foals. As if to punctuate how irritatingly spot-on he always seemed to be, the doors to casks burst open, with the first few foals stepping out and looking around excitedly. That is, until they saw me. I see her! A young earth pony colt yelled out. I see the blue phoenix! Really? After all this, that's the nickname that sticks? What? Preed gasped in offense. I found Gallant's choice of the phoenix to be both quite apt and poetic at the time. It better not stick. I grunted as a horde of screaming colts and fillies rushed through the snow towards us. It makes me sound like a goddess damned supermare. Well, no offense, hon. Shadow snorted, trying to stifle a giggle. You kind of are one. As the mass of excited foals approached, all I could do was lament how I'd actually really been looking forward to those waffles. Never before have I ever been so disappointed. Not once. I mean, having to answer so many questions from excited foals was enough. But then, I have to hate breakfast, too? Oh, get off it. Harmony huffed. Those nice folks didn't have to eat, feed us in the first place. I've accidentally eaten cardboard tastier than that. I managed to get out as I hoofed at my poor tongue. Mom had always promised me that she would teach me her tasty wasteland pancakes, and that was the last time I learned the recipe. 
If she and Dad were still alive out there, that is. The hood of the Marauder door uh, slammed shut without warning, and I let out a reflective gasp as it did. My heart skipped a beat, and the world seemed to become cold and dark. I'd have thought about everything I'd been through. My reflexes might have gotten in check. Then again, with what I've been through, I'm not sure that would be for better or worse. Oh, quit playing in the snow. We ain't got time to dilly-dally. She huffed, hooking a hoof around one of mine and pulling me from the snowbank I'd flopped into. She's all fixed up and ready to run straight to Baltimore. She smiled as I got my hooves back under me, casting a glance over her work. Harmony's words were far too kind for the vehicle that sat before us. Most of the bolted-on armor had fared well in the fight. However, the rest of the vehicle was held on by wonder glue, duct tape, and possibly a few hopes and prayers. Hell, she hadn't actually fixed the roof. Instead, she just bent the two halves back together until they were close enough and sewed them together using high tensile wires strung through numerous bullet holes. It was a poor patch job, but it was Harmony's patch-up job, and she could fix almost anything. Almost. Will she make it to Baltimore? I wasn't normally one to question her, but we had so much writing on this trip that I had to be sure. <laughs> Darn tootin' she will! Harmony grumbled, shooting me an angry glare. I probably deserved for even thinking of that question. I have the time to put a half-assed job in, and you know it. Yeah, I know. I sighed. When I did, I found Harmony's hooves thrown around me in a tight embrace. Don't you worry none. She'll make it. She sniffles, trembling against me. I know you're scared, and honestly, I am too. Hey, I hook my hooves around her as well. We can do this. My own hooves began to tremble as a war of control of me was fought in my mind. I wanted to be afraid, to doubt, but I couldn't. The flame that had been lit in me burned brighter than ever, and with my friends at my side, we could do anything. Besides, your mom and the rangers are leading the charge, and she's the most badass mayor I've ever known. Really? Harmony sniffled, pulling me back and wiping the tears from her eyes. The light of hope filled them for just a moment before flickering out. I'm just so worried. Storm? Shadow's voice came from the air above me. I turned my glance skyward to find him armorless and hovering above us effortlessly, with an uneasy frown across his muzzle. If it weren't for his big blue eyes, it might have been easy to miss the lovable guy against the cloudy sky. I have some bad news. What? I said as my heart sank. Gage and Pi have managed to use my armor to pick up a secure enclave broadcast. He sighed, sinking through the air and down to the snow. Iron's Raptor has been spotted over Baltimore. She's been ordered back above the clouds, but the Enclave won't risk another Raptor in the raging snowstorm over the city, let alone another exchange of fire, if they can help it. So they have few operational Raptors left as it is. Face hoofing, I took a deep breath. Then we force her up. The words caught Shadow off guard, and his expression wavered for a moment. Phileas is going to be hard enough to deal with. If she wants to side with him, then we make sure she can't afford to stay. We give her the choice of death or heading back home. How? He grunted in frustration. This isn't just one mare, nor a single vertebuck. You saw what the lentecular did to Sunshine City. How do we take down something like that? Sighing, he hung his head in defeat. If we try to attack Baltimore, she'll just wipe us out. Not up. Down. Harmony laughed, stepping into the conversation with what I hoped would be one of her brilliant ideas. She turned me with a giggle and pranced on her hooves. Storm, you're a god's damn genius. What? I said slowly. Okay, now we'd moved from brilliance to crazy. I might not know how one of them raptors works, but I'm mighty confident that they rest on those wispy clouds under them. Made from some sort of cloud machine, right? She waited until Shadow nodded. And if the storm over Baltimore is as bad as you guys say, 
One might bet that they get those cloud generators running on high. I think something in Shadow's mind clicked because he stifled a short laugh. That could work. He looked over to me as a wide smile broke across his muzzle. I only had a moment to realize what was coming, and in the snow I couldn't avoid his tackle. As I flopped back into his warm embrace, he squeezed me tighter than ever against him. Any other stallion and I'd have been pissed. Any other pony and I'd have reacted. However, I couldn't fight him. Not that I cared about him the way I do. Thank you, Storm. Why me? Even with my back pressed in the frigid snow, I'd never wanted this moment to end. You're right. We'll send her up. He smiled and pressed his muzzle against mine. I didn't explain at all how I'd helped, but I couldn't pass up a reward like this. Softly, he broke the kiss, and I all but melted under him. I've got to go. That wasn't happening. Pinning me down was his mistake, and I easily wrapped my hooves around him. Not until you'd have the plan. Storm? He gave me a soft smile and pressed his hoof gently to my side. Trust me. I can make her... No. I dropped my tone and glared at him. I trust you, but I won't let you go that easily. I... I watched as his big blue eyes gazed at me, and I could see the light of hope in them burning brighter than ever. I love you. I want to settle down with you, start a family with you. If you didn't come back when we're this close to stopping Phileas, I don't know what I'd do. You'd kill that bastard and move on, because you're the most badass mayor I've ever known in my life. He spoke softly, not losing his smile or that look in his eyes. But I understand. Slowly, he pressed at my side, and I relented. As much as I wanted to be close to him, we couldn't stay like that forever. I'm going back on the lenticular. If I can get into the engineering, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to cripple one of the cloud generators. Iron wouldn't be able to keep the lenticular from collapsing in a cloud, a storm like the one over the city. She'd be forced to head back above for repairs. Well, that or keep the ship below the clouds but she'd be easy pickings for an enclave assault force to retake the ship then. What if they catch you? What am I supposed to do? I didn't want to think about what Iron would do with him. I know the lenticular like the back of my hoof, Storm. And I'll be wearing my armor. I'll be fine. He smiled again widely, stretching his wings out. I'll be in and out before you can get to Baltimore. You, on the other hoof... Need to get thinking on how we're going to take down Phileas. I swear that if you get yourself killed... I blinked a few times, and my vision distorted from the tears in my eyes. Then I'll force Phileas to bring you back so I can kill you again. Duly noted. He chuckled lightly before he leaned close and gave me a kiss on the nose. I'll see you the second you get to Baltimore. With a heavy beat of his wings, he took off. Storm? Harmony sighed. I know you're worried, but it's our best shot. I really hated when she was so blunt, even if she was 100% correct. We just aren't equipped to handle an enclave ship. Sweetie, can you please go tell the others that we'll be ready in five? Yeah. Five minutes. Then it was back into the wild. Back on track towards Baltimore. Towards ending this fight for good. I just hope that Shadow is right, and that I'll see him when we roll up to the Baltimore outskirts. After we'd gathered our things and said goodbye to the last friendly outsiders any of us might ever live to see in our lives, we piled into Harmony's car and took off. The sun had long since risen, and we'd traveled through the blistering cold white wastes. The dark clouds above shielded us from the warmth of the sun, but at the very least, it couldn't cut down the light it provided. For once, I didn't have the cold to worry about as we rode. Harmony had installed a rack of old toasters on the floor between the front and rear seats of the car. Their heating elements glowed red-hot, pulsing along with the engine as we sped across the white wasteland. Along with the toasters, we were all wrapped in thick blankets that Harmony had hoarded in her shop just in case of a bad winter. With freezing to death out of my mind, I thought about a lot of things on the car ride. About the days before everything in my life was so volatile. I thought about my parents, 
and how I desperately hoped that they were still holding out in Baltimore. Mostly, however, each one of my thoughts returned to Shadow. He'd come out of nowhere into my life, and now I couldn't live without losing him. With losing him. <clears throat> We've lost so many already, and we couldn't afford to lose any more. Phillies was bigger than all of us. Maybe even the whole wasteland combined. I would need everyone to help if we had any chance of winning this war. The storm that clung above the eastern wastes was the worst I'd seen in my entire life. The wind howled relentlessly as we plowed our way towards Baltimore. Its rough blasts against the side of the marauder sometimes sent us skidding slightly in the blizzard, but I'm confident that it was only Harmony's sheer stubbornness that kept us on track. Each battering gust fought her like an endless game of tug-of-war, feeling more like the storm had it out for us than anything else. Then again, this wasn't a normal storm. No, I could feel it. It wasn't just the weather, it was a tangible being. Hovering, pulsing, breathing down on us, faithfully trying to keep us from ever reaching its source and master. However, we would not relent. By the time that we had driven just within line of sight of the large camp set up around Baltimore outskirts, the sun was desperately passing its last rays over the far edge of the storm behind us. And then we cut through it. As if it were as simple as day or night, the howling storm was behind us. What must have been a few hundred square miles was encapsulated by the rotating dark clouds. The eye of the storm was a dome where we could continue unimpeded all the way to the rest of Baltimore. Even though it was no longer pressing down on us, I could still feel as if it were watching us on our journey. The more that I thought about the storm, the more my thoughts drifted over to Pretius. Sitting there, he looked as stoic as ever, not even casting a glance over to me once. I wondered how many, uh, how my curse would affect him. If it had threatened to consume me after only having it since I got pie out of her orchard. How long would he last? Maybe it was on his mind as well right now. Maybe he's already fighting it. Storm? Prettius spoke from next to me. His expression didn't change, and his eyes still sat transfixed ahead of us. We have a problem. Turning to look ahead through the armored slats, I could see the city of Baltimore ahead of us. On the outskirts to our left was a large camp with dozens or so fires going in it. The city itself lay dead ahead, and even from here most of the city looked lifeless. The only thing that stood out was the arena district that was lit up like daylight. The fact that it was lit up wasn't odd, but what was silhouetted above it nearly made my heart skip a beat. The lentacular. It's still there. My muzzle formed a word without me even registering it. The dark cloud ship hovered silently above the city. Maybe your friend failed in his task. Gallant grumbled from the back seat. He'd been silent for the whole trip, and for that to be the first thing to hear from him? Well, it turned that flame inside me into a raging bonfire. Don't you fucking say that! I snapped at him, turning around and shooting him a burning glare. He'll do the fucking job, and be back like he said. You don't get to doubt him. Storm. Preed's own voice snapped my attention to him. His own angry glare met mine, and he put a hoof on me. Take it down a notch. His tone was as cold as the snow outside, and I huffed, not wanting to listen. That is up until he pressed his hoof against me, and it was cold as ice. Preed, are you? I reached out again for him, my anger lost in an instant. He recoiled at my touch and snarled. Keep your hooves off me! He writhed away and used his magic to wrap a blanket around him tightly. As if it weren't enough, he doubled over and nestled himself as far as he could into the seat, pressing close against the heat of the toasters. After a minute or so, he spoke up again through gritted teeth. I'm fine. All right, y'all simmer down now. Harmony sighed, turning the car over towards the camp. I know it's been a long ride, but it'll be just a few more minutes till we're in camp. She looked over to me and paused for a moment. In her eyes, I could see how brightly mine were shining blue. 
Try not to kill each other till then, please. She offered a weak smile and brought her eyes back to the snow ahead of us. Every pony sat in silence for the next few minutes, simply watching as the large camp ahead of us grew bigger and bigger. Row upon row of makeshift shelters sat ringed around a small hill at the center. As we approached, cold, tired, and worn-out wastelanders greeted us with fear-filled looks in their eyes. Most of them had only rags to keep them warm. Most were emaciated and looked hungry. On top of all of that, however, very few of them didn't have at least one weapon slung around them. Is this who we're sent into the fight? Harmony said at most a whimper. We'll be sending them out to die. This is war. That's what happens. Get over it. Prettyus grumbled from his curled form. It never changes. It's regrettable. Feature chimed in too. But most of these ponies don't have anything else left to lose. This is their fight more than anything. Then we'll make sure that it's worth it. I sighed, shrinking down into the seat. I couldn't stand to look at them anymore. I kicked myself inside my own head. How could I have complained about breakfast when these ponies were out here just waiting for us? Goddesses, I'm such a fucking moron. All right, here we are. Harmony sighed and rolled us to a stop. Picking my head up just enough that I could see through the armored slats, I found that we'd driven right up beside the base of the hill at the center of the camp. Several tents around us had running lights in them, and a few power-offered ponies trotted between the tents with various supplies strapped to them in place of weapons. With a metallic shriek, Harmony's door fell off its hinges as she pushed it open. A shower of sparks shot out from the center console as the engine died, and one of the rear tires deflated with a prolonged, high-pitched whine. As the whine droned out, Feature's own whine met our ears. I would have turned around and berated the asshole for such a foolish response, but I couldn't care for once. We had things to do, and without the hum of the engine, the ominous quiet of the night took over leaving me with a sense of eerie unease. Told you she'd make it. Harmony sighed with a smile, slotting herself off the bench seat and into the snow. She gasped as she looked at the hill. Mom! Oh good, you all made it back. Longbow smiled from the edge of the tent just ahead of the car. Please, come in and get warm. We have a lot of planning to do. That's it. Cottage groaned and nearly dropped his head onto the battle map. A piece of glass. Longbow had gathered every pony up who'd be managing a part of the assault. Uh, Sans Captain Doppler, who had apparently already been given the order to sneak the Nautilus into Baltimore Harbor and wait for the go signal. Around the battle map. Stood Longbow, Cottage, Elder Maple, Prettius, Feature, Gallant, Harmony, Cheap Shot, Jackknife, and me. Of all of them, only two did not look happy to see me, and it was not a surprise to me at the least that it was both Cottage and Jackknife. It's an element! I snapped back at Cottage, pulling the gem back close to my chest. Well, kind of, at least. And who's this old geezer? Cottage pointed over to Gallant, who simply sat in the back of the tent with his eyes closed. Goddesses, we send you out to get a weapon, and this is what you waste our time with. Stand down, Cottage. Elder Maple snapped at him. No, I won't. He growled and slammed his hoof on the map. We needed a weapon. They promised to punch a hole in the lines. Without it, none of our plans work. None of them would work anyway. Galen chimed up from his corner of the tent. Like hell. What the fuck would you? Cottage began, but quickly found his muzzle clamped shut by Maple's magic. I hate to agree with the star paladin Cottage, but who exactly is this storm? Maple cast a weary eye over to me, before turning to look over Gallant. I was once Phileas's only and best friend. Gallant wheezed, slowly getting to his hooves. I know him better than all of you, and your tactics won't work. Why? Longbow's tone didn't imply that it was a question, so much as she was demanding an answer. 
The problem is that you're trying to fight him using your ways. Phileas is not from this time. Your tactics have no advantage against his outdated ones. Gail allowed a wheezing chuckle. He and I had been through countless sieges, wars much bigger in scale than the one you fight now. Hell, it was almost twice every season that some pony tried their hoof at overthrowing Equestria, and winter was always the most favorable time to attack. Then by all means. Maple stepped back, releasing Cottage from his magic and waving a hoof over the battle map. Tell us how to go into this fight. Slowly, Gallon strode up to the map. He stood over it, hovering over each scribbled and uh, point on the map. <clears throat> he hummed, raising his hoof to stroke his white beard as he contemplated things. Were it back in my day, I'd order the city surrounded and sieged until he relented. However, his armies do not starve, nor do they need rest. I'm also certain there is no way to negotiate a surrender either. That usually worked back then. Genius! Cottage face hoofed. Why didn't we think of just asking them politely to lay down and die? Each time he'd interrupted with his sarcasm, it made the fire in me grow just a little bit. I really wanted to kick him in the goods to shut him up for good. By the way, both Maple and Longbow were fuming. I could tell that I wasn't the only one with a thought. That settles it. Gallant said as he straightened up. I propose a reversed siege. What? Mipper replied, looking generally at a loss for words. If I'm reading your map correctly, Gallant struck his hoof out and pointed to the three main streets that ran through Baltimore. There are three main avenues into the area where Phileas is barricaded. If we were to block them off from the inside and reinforce the walls more than they are, his own army will not be able to breach it before we struck a fatal blow against him. So, all we're going to do is lock ourselves in with a mad stallion and his entire third of an army. Cottage blurted out, trying to stifle a cackling laugh with his hoof. Elder, you can't seriously be considering his opposal. It's insane! Unless you have a better idea... Longbow groaned as she wrapped her magic around Cottage's muzzle. Then I suggest you hold your tongue. Again. Mabel shot an uneasy glance over to Longbow. I hate to side with Cottage. But how are we supposed to get our fighters in there? Leave that to Jackknife and me. Chipshot practically called out, jumping and throwing a hoof around Jack's neck. It'll be a tight squeeze, but it ain't the first time old Jack snuck some power armor into the city. Ain't that right? Yeah. Jack fumed and glared at Cheap. Right. If this is to work, then we'll need to block off the main access roads to the arena district. Elder Maple spoke up, sitting down and studying the map intently. How? Prettius leaned forward looking over the map as well. You'd need to drop at least a few buildings on the roads to keep them from getting through. He looked over to Maple, cocking an eyebrow. It'd be hard to pull off, but I'd say a building on each side would create a big enough blockage. Exactly my thought. Maple nodded, turning to Longbow. Can we head down to requisition after we're done here? We've got a crate of Mark uh, 6 spell seeking 88 shells linked to the square targeting talismans from the nautilus we'll have two pony teams each one tags a different side of the street then calls in the strike the shells should be precise enough to bring down one of the buildings correctly that way no pony has to lug around a few bricks of high explosives previous nodded smart storm Longbow spoke up. If this all works, what do we expect to find inside? Ah, uh, I didn't know how to answer that. Somehow I had the privilege of being the most knowledgeable of his current status and not knowing what the hell he was up to at the same time. I don't know. My gaze drifted down to my chest, staring at the small crystal in my hoof. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. Prettius stepped in, 
I looked up to find him staring at me. The soft and kind look that he seldom wore greeted me when I did. Once we're inside, I'm sure it won't be hard to find him. And when you do, you can use your power on him. Here, here. Gallant knocked his hoof on the table and nodded. I'm certain that young Miss Storm and her element have the power to defeat Phileas once and for all. Maybe, but you all forgot about it. Gage grumbled and pointed her hoof at the tent flap. But there's an enclave raptor just waiting for the right moment to vaporize us all. How are we going to deal with that? Just as soon as she finished, the tent flap pushed back, and the one thing that could have taken my mind off all this strode in. We might already have a plan for that, Shadow said with a smile. He knew it was coming, and I couldn't stop myself from running at him and throwing my hooves around him. What do you mean, we? Prettius asked quickly. Weren't you supposed to have sabotaged it already? Pretty Boy here is a lousy saboteur. An oddly familiar voice of a mare came from outside the tent. Shadow effortlessly picked me up and pulled me aside as another power-armored pegasus strolled in. It took me a moment to recognize her, but I recognized her as Hale. She was the mare that arrested us with Cloud Streaker from before. Now, tell me everything you know about why Iron Cross and her sister have such a goddess-damned hard-on for the stallion in Baltimore. And just maybe, I can help you get her out of your mane. Well, this certainly was an unexpected turn for events. However, you know what they say. Beggars can't be choosers when you're trying to save the wasteland. Sure, I might have ad-libbed that a little bit, but whatever. So long as we get iron out of my life, I'm up for anything. Come on in, and get comfortable. I smiled and pointed towards the interior of the tent. We have a lot to talk about. Chapter End I am the one who can recount what I've lost. Quest finished none. Quest started once more into the flay. Levels and perks earned? None.